Today on Security and Compliance Weekly, we're going to have a group discussion about how to actually grow or mature an organization's cybersecurity program. We talk all the time about the cause of so many breaches being linked to immature security programs. We've also discussed how to measure the maturity of your programs, and we've actually linked that to, as one definition of compliance. But we don't often hear about practical or pragmatic steps to actually maturing your security program. So today, that's what we're going to focus on. Uh, I don't expect that we're all going to agree on the approaches and strategies, nor on how to prioritize the activities. But my hope is we'll find some common ground when it comes to things that must be done, perhaps earlier rather than later, and at least come up with some guidelines uh, to help you determine the, sh the should-haves from the nice-to-haves. We're dedicating the whole show on this topic, and we welcome our listeners to join the conversation, whether it's to make comments, snide remarks, ask questions, whatever. Uh, drop them in on the Discord server. Somebody will get them to us. So join us as we continue our journey of tearing down silos and building bridges on Security and Compliance Weekly. This is a Security Weekly production. And now, it's the show that bridges the requirements of regulations, compliance, and privacy with those of security. Your trusted source for complying with various mandates, building effective programs, and current compliance news. It's time for Security and Compliance Weekly. The average cost to respond to an insider threat is $11.45 million. That's a lot of reasons why a functional insider threat program must be a core part of any modern cybersecurity strategy. To protect your organization's sensitive data and meet compliance requirements, you need controls in place to deter, detect, and disrupt insider threats. With ECRAN system, you can meet control requirements imposed by compliance mandates all within one insider threat management platform. Get your free 30-day trial at securityweekly.com forward slash ECRAN. That's E-K-R-A-N, and fulfill your compliance requirements. The question is simple. Have any of the systems on my network been compromised? The answer is harder than it should be. Enter AI Hunter. Active Countermeasures has automated and streamlined techniques used by the best pen testers and threat hunters in the industry to create AI Hunter, a network threat hunting solution that does the first pass of a hunt for you to identify systems that are most likely to be compromised and scores the results on a scale from 0 to 100. You can then research those systems in depth with AI Hunter. Focus your valuable time on the systems that need your expertise with AI Hunter. Sign up for a personal demo today at securityweekly.com forward slash ACM. Welcome to episode number 40 of Security and Compliance Weekly, recorded on August 25th, 2020. I'm your host, Mr. Jeff Mann, coming to you from the middle of the BW Parkway in Maryland, if you believe my background anyway. And joining me today are my illustrious co-hosts, Mr. Josh Marpet, Mr. Scott Lyons, and Mr. John Snyder Esquire. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Pleasure. Thank you again. All right. I see you're back at home, Josh, tucked into your home office. It's good to I see I am, you. I am, I am. It's lovely to be home. Uh, as much as it was nice to be out after, you know, how many months of quarantine, it was lovely right. to be home and uh, just settle into my own bed, be back at my own desk, etc. Yeah, I've been down in uh, Richmond now for a little over a week, and I'm kind of itching to get home myself. But we, uh, if, if you watched or, or heard last week's show, uh, you might have heard that uh, moments before we went on air last week, um, my granddaughter was born, Emma, and uh, we just celebrated her one week uh, uh, birthday uh, just before the show this week. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that every week, but you never know. It's an excuse to drink bubbly, bubbly uh, wine, sparkling wine. Anyway, uh, before we jump into our topic, I do have a couple announcements if you have any specific guest or topic requests that you want us to cover on one of our shows, you can submit your suggestions for guests by visiting uh, securityweekly.com forward slash guests, fill out the form. And uh, if you don't have a guest request, just throw in there somewhere what your topic discussion uh, idea is. And uh, we review those suggestions monthly and we'll reach out to you once we've reviewed them. Um, 
some of our upcoming webinars and trainings. Our next technical training is on August 27th, and it's going to teach you about boot hole, SIG red, and SM bleed, or basically how to effectively prioritize and remediate vulnerabilities. Um, then you can learn how to extend the enterprise network for remote workers and protect your home network by tuning in on September 10th. Uh, to get uh, access to either of these uh, trainings or webcasts, you can visit securityweekly.com forward slash webcast to see what we have coming up and to register. And as always, if you miss any of our uh, webcasts or on-demand trainings, go to securityweekly.com forward slash on-demand to view our archive. Anything in our archive, you're, you can have at it. All right, gentlemen. I wanted to talk <laughs> with a bunch of immature people about how to mature something. So I'm here. I don't, I'm, I'm here. not sure how I'm this here. is going to go. <laughs> uh, but, is this where we start out with metrics, metrics, metrics? No. No, 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 no. Why measure things? I just want to throw money at things. Well, you can't it, do that, it, but you got to measure it to know how much to throw. All right. Well, well and yeah, it's I'm funny. Sorry. Go ahead and start us off. It's it, well, it's funny that you should immediately jump to metrics and measuring because you know when you Google search, which is how I do all my research these days, uh, you know maturities of security programs, you get inundated with all sorts of uh, tried and true and and maybe somewhere in between methods of coming up with a measurement of how mature are you. Uh, probably the what sticks out to me in terms of our own shows was our episode that we did on CMMC, where uh, we were introduced to the concept, and, and I forget what they were called, stages or levels that, of advancement in CMMC, and you get there by, it's, it's level. essentially measurement uh, level, thank you, of, of the maturity of your security organization. And I can't tell you how many uh, times on, on the main show, Paul Security Weekly, we've had discussions where either it's on the news and we're talking about yet another company that's been breached, or we're talking about why you know, various tools and solutions that you know, companies were talking to, you know, how they fit in, uh, um, and how things work or don't work based on the, 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 the maturity of the security programs. Um, but what I don't hear a lot of and, and had a hard time finding, frankly, any kind of authoritative details is, okay, everybody talks about the need to, to mature your security program, but how do you actually go about doing it if you're, you know, assume you've measured and you're somehow deficient, you're somewhere lower on the scale or the totem pole and you, and you want to advance yourself. That element, but also, you know, just simply what is the right way to approach security in an organization and, and what are the things that you need to do sooner than later? Um, I think we have a track record of about 25 years about how that's been done. And, and as time allows, I want to maybe perhaps infuse into the discussion some, some thoughts about can we do something different? Maybe we'll save that for the second segment. But, uh, I, you know, to start off, you know, you've already jumped into metrics and measurements, so that's probably a good place to start. Um, what is anybody's ideas, and especially John, I, I, you know, I hope you, you won't stay silent for the whole episode. Certainly legal uh, perspectives uh, are important, I think, as part of growing your security organization. Uh, you know, but but is there a right time or wrong time to start thinking about the legal Im implications of what you do or, or or what you don't do or when you do it? So that's the setup. Um, anybody have let, any let me Jeff, if, I, if you don't mind, let me jump in uh, and and sort of kick things off Please. by noting that we are not. When we talk about organization, cybersecurity, and the maturity, um, we're not just talking about the opinion of other cyber professionals. Um, we have uh, an example, and, and we're going to talk about it in depth next week, but uh, uh, Uber's uh, chief security officer was indicted uh, a few days ago 
in relation to a breach that happened at Uber and, and then the, the reaction of the company. Um, and that whole thing came on the heels of another breach at Uber uh, that was being investigated by the feds. And so the point of it that everybody should understand is uh, there is a governmental uh, and uh, uh, security law dimension to this. And so uh, the question of is your organization sufficiently mature uh, is a very, very critical question that will be uh, litigated in court that will be uh, determined by prosecutors in some cases. And so uh, the question that we're talking about today, I just think that uh, everyone should keep in mind, uh, this is not an academic issue. This is an issue that uh, determines you know, whether or not companies get sued, whether or not people go to jail. Um, so and so, so I, my... I'll underscore the whole discussion with that. Go ahead. My immediate question for you from a legal perspective, John, is, uh, you know, based on what you're saying, uh, are all, forget the maturity for a minute, but are all companies of all sizes and all industry verticals, all markets, are they all viewed equally uh, in, in terms of the law or are there differences based on you know, what type of company, what size of company and things like that? Uh, yeah, uh, they're not all viewed d equally. Of course, uh, earlier stage companies are held to a lower standard. By the way, this is not codified in any statute. This is more practice. Um, okay. You know, what is reasonable to expect of a company that started up six months ago may not be the same or is not the same as what's reasonable uh, to expect of a public company. Um, also, mm. you know, it, it bears upon what data you're, you're holding on to. If you, you know, once you embark upon, uh, holding and taking custody of, uh, PII and other sensitive data, um, you are of course subject to, um, different you know, regulatory standards, standards and, and things like that. But, but of, of course, you know, the more mature a company, the larger the company, the more resources the company has as a practical matter, the greater expectation the government's going to have. So wait, wait, for wait, instance, wait, 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 wait. I've got a, I've got a great <laughs> yeah. stupidity story. I got asked by a startup who was into is encrypted biographical in nature. Do we have to follow HIPAA? <laughs> yep, it is. And well, went, if, if you have if you have data that's subject to HIPAA, then yes. If you're not yeah, well, ready to follow HIPAA, the point. don't have data. The, like, like, so yes, everybody gets treated differently depending on how mature you are, depending on that. And that goes back to what we were talking about. You know, we want to talk about how to mature a company and how to mature their security and compliance and all the, the important stuff that they're doing. How do we help them? do that. What do they measure themselves against? Yes. Going back to Scott and oh my God, his endless metric memes on discord. Oh dear yeah. God. If you're not on discord, <laughs> hop on there. The memes are killing me. Uh, but <laughs> you know, how do you, uh, what do you actually do as a, let's start. Uh, and you're right, Jeff, there's multiple levels of companies. There's smalls, mediums, larges, publics. Uh, 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 there's niche companies, there's startups, there, there's a 14 different 20 different whatever levels. But uh, where do you start? And let's start there yeah. with the practical stuff, how to mature your 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 security and compliance stance. And All what right. do you do? So I'm asking Johnny to to put up a slide that I've used in a in a talk. Um, and this is a graphic that I found somewhere, uh, you know, again, Google searching some some time ago. And it's basically a, I think it's a fairly decent and a fairly compre comprehensive overview about everything that, in this instance, a CISO has to be involved with and know about. And my comment when I when I share this in talks is, you know, I, I've been in this industry almost forty years, and I can I you know I think it's a good list. I think it's fairly well organized. I can speak to most of it, but I certainly can't speak to all of it. 
and, and certainly not all of it at an in-depth level. So, uh, you know, my first question in terms of growing a maturity, uh, growing the maturity of your security organization is where do you start? Given, let's say, for example, that this is all the stuff that you need to. So to what you're saying is at you least just think walked about. into a company. You've just walked mm-hmm. into a company and they've said, we have nothing. Right. Where do you start? Right. Well, okay. and it's hard to say that because companies these days rarely have nothing. And 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 I do want to address that question, but perhaps the the sub the sub bullet to that question is, or how do you you know given you know given the 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 lay of the land the the current landscape, how do you adjust, recover, you know, refocus, you know, move on from where you are, which again begs the question of maybe you do start with measuring and coming up with a met a metric. But uh, you know, those are the questions. Have at it. So, you know, uh, in the Discord, they're saying it's because of tools. And I'd love to hear more about that, uh, whoever that was. But uh, if you walk into a company and they're not doing things like patching their servers, if they're not doing the, um, I guess what we call blocking and tackling, the, the, the table stakes, the basics, the fundamentals, if you're old like me, you know, do the fundamentals, kids, and get off my lawn. Uh, I hear know. you say that every day, by the way. Uh, get off my lawn. That's because you keep yeah. stalking me, damn it. No, uh, well, I mean, I, I need something to do. So uh, if you're not doing the basics, which is patch management, which is uh, vulnerability management, which is understanding what you own, asset management, you know, and, and these are these are labels. These are names. How do you actually do them? Well, there's a lot of well, ways. And, and perhaps we would not be in complete agreement. And maybe we'll again. Maybe we'll save this for the second segment of what are the basics. You know, what are the must? Oh, things that you must do. Okay, it, 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 name them. Go for it, Jeff. Take it. What are the basics that you see? I'd love to. Hear, I'm serious. I'd love to hear it. Well, uh, I will. I will present. I, I, I will introduce it. I, I want to hopefully dig, 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 drill down on it. Maybe in the second segment. But, exactly. You know, but at least give me the yeah. Start but me off. Go for my, it. My. I think the 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 basics are you know you have a company you've got computer equipment you have a network and I think back to the you know when I first started in the commercial sector the early days of the world wide web and companies that already had technology started plugging into the internet I mean in the early days we called it internet security it wasn't network it wasn't cyber we just simply called it how do you protect yourself if you're going to plug into the internet um, and, and the basics collectively, uh, back then were a firewall, you know, have some sort of perimeter protection. Um, and that very, very quickly mushroomed into, well, you need to know where your in, insecurities are, where your vulnerabilities are. So either you ran out and got a, a pen test or a vulnerability assessment or, a vulnerability scanner, and in the early days, there weren't that many, but there were a few. Um, very quickly, the evolution was uh, having some sort of intrusion detection, as it were. Um, but I think collectively, the 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 must-haves I think had to do with some sort of technology solution, which might be you know the person on Discord that was talking about tools. Maybe that's what they're referring to. Maybe not. I don't want to put words in their mouth. Um, and I, and I think that was the beginning of perhaps the, the, the notion that, well, security is a technology, uh, problem that that to be solved with technology. And what I hope we come around to is, but I can put it in the form of the question. Uh, we talk about sort of the fundamentals of security being or the component parts being people, processes, and technology. Uh, I think hopefully most of us can agree that those are sort of the component parts. Um, I think we as an industry and as a culture have, have 
uh, focused mostly on the technology processes, to what degree do the compliance programs make us do it, people, we certainly talk about it, and we certainly have industries like social engineering and all these companies out there that are doing gamification and security awareness training and fishing exercises and fishing expeditions. It's all playing on the people like that. That's like, like that's a new thing. Uh, I will I will introduce one idea and then I'll turn it back to the to you guys to to rip me apart. Uh, I I like to think that before you focus on the people, the processes, and the technology, that it it is important as an organization to know w- what you're trying to accomplish in terms of having a security program before you start listening to all the vendors and everybody that's telling you what you need to have, what, what you must have. And I simply call that purpose. So for me, the, the pillars of security are purpose, people, process, technology. I think those are the must haves in terms of the topics you need to cover and, and what specifically you do in each one. That perhaps is what we'll discuss and what we'll try to prioritize and figure out where do you start. So, so what do you think, Josh? Gonna, what do you think, Scott? I'm I'm going to throw what something think, back John? at you, and I and I mm-hmm. agree with you. By the way, just to be clear, your okay. your comment about purpose. Uh, I was thinking architecture, but purpose fits it even better because purpose includes okay. the architecture. Uh, we're sure. talking about what you're doing. You're talking about why you're doing it. Uh, mm-hmm. Then comes after that comes the how the the where the the, the all the duff, different questions and yep. i think that you and i are thinking very similarly if you understand what your goal is if you understand what you're supposed to be doing if you understand uh, why you're doing all of these different things then you put them together and wrap the the security and compliance in there with it uh, in mm-hmm. in purpose of a goal in in search of a goal in search of not in search of a goal uh, in furtherance of a goal and I, I think right. we're thinking very similar things, and I love that. That's that's awesome, Jeff. I, I really agree but, with you on that. But your almost Freudian slip, I think, is how, and I hate to overgeneralize, but I, I like to overgeneralize. I think a lot no. of organizations have approached this, especially vendors and startups, is they come up with a solution and go look for a problem. Uh, and they, they look for the goal, as you put it. So you know, if you were to look at me, if you were to look at me, let me step in here, boys. If you were to look let at me, me and say, okay. I want to look at you right now. Look at oh, me. yes. Well, oh. I mean, you know, Johnny flipped this over, so we're good to go. Um, yep. If you were to look at me right now and you say, Scott, you know, how, you're stepping into a new position. How are you going to tackle wrangling what's going on inside of IT, inside of uh, dev, engineering, sales? How are you going to do all that, right? Uh, my first inclination is to understand what the company is actually selling and then how do you keep them selling it, i.e. how do you secure the sales, right? From there, walk back through the program, making sure that engineering, dev, and product are all feeding simultaneously into sales. Sales knows what's going on and is passing client and customer communication back to those three units to make sure that the product is the best fit. Right and best fit for the vertical for the wherever you're trying to sell. If a company is not making sales, they are not a company. They are not surviving. They are closing doors. Right. So when we look at startups, right, with that sort of attitude, right, a lot of startup owners don't understand that you can make the best product in the world, but if you can't sell it, is it really the best product in the world? Thought well, it, it may solve be. the problem. It may solve a pr- the, the specific problem it was designed for, which would make it the best product for that problem in the world or whatever. But if you can't sell it, then it's not a widely used product. Uh, those are two different sort of questions, um, if that makes sense. One solves a problem. One is actually a, a product that can be sold. Or so is you're saying sold. one solves a problem and the other is a problem to be solved? Well, That's not clever, to... uh, however inaccurate. <laughs> and, and not to digress, but uh, I, I can think of the early early days of uh, uh, you know video tape. Uh, you know there was beta or, or VHS, and and everybody said beta was better, but VHS is what outsold everything. And so, you know what sold wasn't necessarily what was best. Second Jeff, example, more Jeff. in computers. Yes. Why did VHS win? I just want to hear you say it. Go ahead. Come on. 
Because it sold more? Why nope. did it why did it win? Josh, tell me. Enlighten. Because they allowed porn to be recorded on it. Ah, uh, that explains so much. Yeah, that was before the internet. So, mm -hmm. you know, in the early days of personal computers, there were alternatives to Microsoft. Um, one that I remember was a, an operating system called CPM. Uh, my my very first computer was you had the choice of loading either CPM or DOS, and um, I think I could load both. And I think I blew it up at one point and I had to start over. But uh, there were a lot of people that said that CPM was a, a, a superior operating system. But Microsoft won out with DOS. Um, perhaps a different strategy than allowing porn, but you know they certainly won the battle, but wasn't necessarily te technically the best. But we digress. Uh, all that to say, Scott, is I don't necessarily agree that if it sells, it's the best. There's other interesting point. That go into it. So let's 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 get back on track. Let's get back on track. How do we mature a security program practically and pragmatically? And by the way, just to be clear, in terms of the pragmatic problem, I had designed a budget because, I mean, this is fun for an infinite <laughs> number of monkeys with an infinite number of typewriters for an infinite length of time, which would, by definition, design every policy process and procedure you would ever need and write out your entire system security plan for your federal government contracting needs. It would also write out your entire product line, your pitch deck, the whole nine yards, and it would sell for you. So, I mean, I'm sorry, but there's an answer. All right. There is an answer. pragmatic. Well, <laughs> going back to something that John said initially about, you know, mature organizations, we expect, for, expect more out of them. We expect them to be further along. In that context, I tend to think of uh, how we define a mature organization as large and old. And that was pretty much the context that we that we referred to them, which, to your point, Josh, and to your point, Scott, really is more reflective of their uh, success in selling whatever it is that they're selling. They're a successful company, so they grow, they age, they stay, they stick around. What does that have to do with security in an organization? Okay. So, by the way, sorry, minorly off topic, Jeff. I love your shirt. I'm a big fan of No Starch Press. They're lovely people, and Bill Pollock is a good friend. I love him dearly. He's a great guy. Um, I agree. Thank you. But I think that the definition of a mature product and the definition of a mature company and the definition of a mature security or compliance program can be very, very different. Can we agree mm -hmm. on that? Absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about a mature security and compliance program. And the definition of a mature security and compliance program is one that is resilient, it's uh, 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 adaptive, uh, it, it works, and it can handle any situation that you throw at it. And it has solutions or answers built in. It's a pretty bastardized definition, but are we okay with something like that for a moment or two? Well, other than you used a bunch of buzzwords, yeah, go ahead. I feel like we should all be drunk after listening to that buzzword <laughs> bingo, Josh. But 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 Jeff didn't say you PCI didn't met, you didn't times. mention and you didn't mention blockchain, AI, or, or ML. But go on. Mm. And I didn't mention PCI either. Huh? Okay. We're, no, we're so getting that's to that. Jeff's job. We're getting so to that. So we've <laughs> so we've got a situation where the def the very definition of mature security program is hard to define sufficiently. Uh, and it's so, sort of like obscenity. Uh, I know it when I see it. And still, it's tough to define because even when you look at something and go, that looks like a mature security program, mm -hmm. there's still things that you may not be seeing. How do they respond to a disaster, an incident, a breach, or whatever? And at that, they right. might fall apart, in which case it's not mature security program, but on mm -hmm. normal operating procedure, it works perfectly and smoothly and lovely. So there's a lot of different scenarios under which a security program could be found to be immature, even though on normal days, normal operating, they're fine. Uh, again, okay. we're saying that there's difficulty in defining or seeing, uh, 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 identifying a mature security system, mature security program. Right. This is a tough one, but let's it, not start there. 
Can we start okay. in our second segment with the other end of the spectrum? When you're immature, what should you do to start? What should a, a new organization or an organization that's unsure or a new IT manager, new security, CISO, whatever, starts from there? That is probably a pragmatic approach to assume starting from a, from scratch and then for the older organizations that have been around for a while, perhaps the key for them is to, you know, jump, jump on the, you know, the Ferris wheel while it's moving, uh, uh, maybe at a slow point. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I feel like we should take a break and we'll come back and, uh, and we'll talk PCI a little bit, but, but hopefully further the dis- discussion. And the goal for all of us is let's try to at least come up with two or three takeaways at the end of this of practical things or pragmatic things to do to try to move the ball forward. That's our goal. We'll be right back. <laughs> 